Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. I am delighted and honored on this episode to be talking with author Hannah Kahn. Hannah, thank you for jumping in, joining, and talking with me for a few minutes. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, and thank you also for bringing the amazing and wonderful shelfie behind you. I love that. <laughs> love that. It's the yeah. physical manifestation of the dream space behind me here. So it's a lovely space there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's like everything I've collected since infancy to now. So it's a hodgepodge of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, as, as it should be, as the literacy life is. Uh, so I'll mention a couple of titles here, and you, you've written pretty widely so i'm going to mention just a few but then we can talk about any particular ones that you would like to mention for listeners uh so i'll mention amina's voice did i get that name right uh well mostly um i say okay. Amina, but amina. Uh, okay yeah 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 uh and that's a two-part story mm -hmm. uh, i yeah. believe um and more to the story is another one of your works as well yes that is my little women inspired story. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Love that connection to the classics and love the the classics re envisioned. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's Amina's voice, and I want to say Amina's song. Is that the yes. other one? Yep, yeah. that thought so. All right, all right. Um, and so you you have a new book that is soon to be in the world as well, and I'll make sure that this is out well in time for people to be familiar with it. And that is a book called Drawing Dina. Yes, yes, I, I have an arc of it right here. So I'm oh, in lovely. love with the the final is even more beautiful, but the the cover is just so stunning. So very excited Absolutely. to have this um, launch very soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the way that you center young characters and speak to young younger audiences. Uh, and I'm curious by means of that that first origins question that I typically like to ask the very English teacher question of what connected you to the world of writing and authoring? Well, I will say, I think a lot of it had to do with my teachers um, growing up and, and my mother, of course, who pushed reading on me as a kid and would take me to the library very regularly. Um, she made it clear that reading was going to be a part of my life and that she uh -huh. really valued it. Like she'd love nothing more than seeing us with a book. And I think I, I internalized that, you know, it was like a way to get praise and a way to yeah. feel good. And we'd go to the library very regularly with bags from the grocery store that we'd fill up with books. So that was a lot of how I spent my free time. And I, I think somewhere, you know, that magical transition from reading to, to writing happened for me as a kid. So uh, at a young age, I started writing for fun because I enjoyed it, not because I thought I had an audience because I, I didn't have one. <laughs> but um, I think that writing coupled with, you know, creative writing at school um, really made me start to love it. And I got a lot of encouragement from teachers. And it's amazing to go back now and look at some of my report cards that my mother saved from elementary school. And even my I, my second grade teacher wrote in her little comments about my my progress over the over the year and she talked about me you know expressing myself verbally and how she felt like I I could do more to push myself and this is a second grade teacher but um I felt like they really emphasized and and encouraged writing and I think once I started doing more of it and and realized it was something that um, I could do and and I was better at it than math <laughs> I like was I definitely steered myself in that direction and continue to do it but I, I really do owe a lot to my teachers who who encouraged me love that love love the story of teachers the um, library as well former librarian over here so oh, yeah. Uh, yeah great great that those supporters and uh, voices were part of your life yeah, absolutely. No, I'm very grateful to all of them. And I, for everyone out there, I can't say how much I, I love the library as a kid. And it was just my, my happy place. And there's nothing like it. Like I, I realized as a mother that I, I sort of deprived my kids and I, I still took them to the library, but not as frequently as I went as a kid, because we would often go to bookstores mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and the Barnes and Noble was so tempting with their little train table that my kids <laughs> wanted to play at. But I realized that what was missing was that feeling of you know, an arm full of books or a bag filled with books and that sense of being rich in books and having this unlimited supply. So um, for anyone out there, <laughs> make use of your library. It's a gift. Absolutely. And, and I love that phrase, um, rich in books as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
So speaking of voice and, and literature and sharing stories, what do you hope that readers take away from your work? Oh, I think, I think what I would love most of all is for readers. Well, the ultimate compliment as a writer is to have a reader, you know, finish your book and then want to read it over again. And I know mm-hmm. that's what I did with the books I loved most as a kid was, you know, I was a huge rereader and I would, you know, memorize passages of them. I mentioned my little women inspired book more to the story that was mm-hmm. little women was a book that I read over and over again. So, you know, for me, what I, what I would love is for kids to feel a strong enough connection to my characters that they just fall in love with them and, and, you know, wish that they were their friend or wish that they were part of that family or on that street in that neighborhood, because that's the way I used to feel about, you know, Judy Bloom's books and Beverly Cleary's books. Like I wanted to be part of Ramona Quimby's gang of friends in that neighborhood and play on that street and do all those silly things. And, and so for kids to just feel that invested in my characters and want to keep coming back for more and hopefully read my other books too. And, and just, you know, feel like those characters kind of become a part of them and almost like real people that they know and, you know, enjoy spending time with to me, that's, you know, the goal because those characters then stay with kids and, and, you know, as they grow and and become part of their life and maybe inspire their future stories. So I think it's a cycle and, and a way for us, of course, to, to get to know each other better, since I am writing about characters who look like me and my children who are Pakistani American Muslim, and maybe not every reader has a chance to know a family like mine, but through my books, you know, they will look at that chance. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love the sense of belonging. And I love the idea both of, of seeing yourself in a book and um, getting to maybe know an experience that you're not as familiar with in a book. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I, I feel like people often think of, you know, what we call diverse books as being intended for the underrepresented or, you know, the person who needs to see themselves. And I and I fully believe that um, I can only imagine what it would have been like for me as a kid to see characters, you know, that look like me. I never had that experience. But I also think it's really important for other people to you know read about people different from them. And mm-hmm. I did growing up and some of those characters I love the most, you know, didn't look like me or have a family like mine. But you know, to create that connection, like you mentioned, and that, um, you know, that sense of understanding, I think is is equally, if not more important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of folks, or at least I've heard people say, oh, uh, writing for kids has to be this easier thing. And I know it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing to do well. It's not an easy thing to um, pull that story off. And you have a very honest audience that you're aiming for. So I'm curious about how you negotiate that process of writing for young people and and what that's like. Oh, yeah. I I mean, I love it. And for me, it, you know, really... It really is about going back to that age, you know, and and trying to mine my memories of what it felt like to be a kid. And I think in a lot of ways, we, you know, we think we change and evolve and learn a lot as we get older. But in a lot of ways, we're still, you know, we're still grappling with the same questions and concerns that we just pretend we know the answers. Um, right, so right. for me, it's <laughs> it's a lot of fun to go back and and sort of re-examine the world today through the, you know, lens of a kid. Um and, you know, of course, being a mom helps. I have I have two boys who, you know, have been my my beta readers and it, it you know helps to have young people in my life to get inspiration from and um, steal things out of their lives and put them in my books. But, um, you know, that whole exploration of, you know, things I'm thinking of now, even, you know, the things I'm grappling with, like my newest novel, Drawing Dina, um, <laughs> Dina's struggles are very much my struggles. Like, what does it mean to be a creative person and to create art in in this world today, um, yeah. in the world of social media and, and an audience that's so immediate and that can, you know, whose opinion, you know, right away? Um, how does that shape the way we feel about ourselves and what we're making? Um, or things like, you know, dealing with with anxiety and clenching your teeth at night and cracking a tooth, which is something that I've done. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, just, just some of the, the everyday struggles that we all have, but, you know, I get to think about it from the perspective of a 13 year old instead of, <laughs> instead of like me. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you just spoke to, you know, the inner life, something that, that people feel, anxiety, but then also that feeling of, of sort of fitting in and uh, being a creative. And you anticipated my question of uh, talking a little bit more about drawing Dina, because I, I usually ask about what's sort of circling your mind creatively right now. And I know that that is uh, soon to be out in the world, early February, I believe. Yes, yes. It's um, two weeks from today, actually, February February 6th. Um, and um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's the, Dina is an artist who is trying to find her own space in, in the creative world. And she's very much an, an admirer of Vincent Van Gogh and tries to imitate his style, um, which I was amazed to see is incorporated into the amazing cover art. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, and so she, you know, she's, she's navigating that path and really trying to, you know, figure out where she fits in and she has other people. She finds a mentor who really encourages her to look beyond, you know, the historical greats and maybe to more contemporary influences and to really find her own style. Um, but at the same time, she's dealing with her parents' financial struggles and internalizing a lot of stresses in her life. And, and she's has these strange symptoms that she doesn't recognize as anxiety. Um, like, you know, gastrointestinal things like she's feeling stomach aches and nausea and um, slowly comes to realize what it is that she's she's facing um, as she's reconciling all this, you know, social media stuff and and a, a, a cousin who's trying to help her grow her mother's business, but, um, you know, is a little attention starved and you know, there's some tension there. So she's she's navigating all these, um, you know, different challenges of growing up, but also discovering this undiagnosed anxiety and realizing that it's something that she needs to ask for help um, to help manage. And, um, you know, something that isn't always clear cut, especially when, you know, at any time in our life, but mm -hmm. especially sometimes for kids, it can be hard to, to, to know exactly what's going on if, if they don't themselves understand it and they don't know how to express it. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, for kids who might be feeling similar, um, it might be comforting to know that they're not alone and, um, and that there are things that you can do to, to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and once more, I, I love that message of belonging and knowing that you're not alone. And there's actually a um, self portrait of Vincent van Gogh, that hangs in my classroom. It's not an original. I wish it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so love the the way the visual works there as well. And just thinking about what does it mean to be an artist? Because that's such a great parallel to think about um, a young person making sense of the world. And then, uh, I mean, Van Gogh's journey was just so interesting and unique in its own right. Yeah, yeah. And she's she has done a, a project on him, which makes her interested in his life. And she actually uh, tries to create a a self-portrait based off of Van Gogh's. Um, and uh, that's one of the, our projects that she's doing at school. Um, but interestingly, like I went, I don't know if you've heard of this, but there are these traveling exhibits, the Van Gogh experience. Yes, that's what yeah. my poster is from. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So I had the chance to, to go to the one in DC. And um, so she, she, the book is set in, in Northern Virginia and she, visits the same exhibit I saw and, and has um, an unexpected reaction to it when she's there. Um, but that was fun to explore too, like just the different ways that we consume art, you know, not only the way Vincent Van Gogh maybe intended it, <laughs> but the way it's evolved into today's, you know, patterns of consumption. And, um, and, you know, she's, she's trying to process all of that and, and um, figure it out. It's, it's pretty overwhelming at times. <laughs> And you, you talked about being a creative in the world, and I, one of the memories I have of going to that exhibit was just the opportunity to sit and be still and mm -hmm. let something happen around you, and that mm -hmm. doesn't happen very often in our world, so... Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I love all the, the things that you're working with. Oh, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love and, I, you know, what I love about writing for kids is that they are so perceptive, and they are capable of thinking of all these big things, you know, that, that we're thinking about too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe, you know, we don't, we don't have to talk down to them, that they, they are figuring it out as, as much as the rest of us. Um, and it's just nice to, to be able to, to explore those things in, in a format that, you know, people, like you mentioned before, people think it's, it's easier. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like to think of it as less fussy, you know, maybe a little less pretentious than adult writing can be right, at times. Right. Um, but just, you know, good, good straightforward storytelling but um you know it doesn't have to be any less um impactful i think than than some of the uh you know adult literary fiction that we're we're, we're consuming as well yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. And um, that moment when like a student in my class or a child in your life points out something about a book and you're like, oh yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that. That's I know. true. That's probably what the author had in mind. Um, so... <laughs> totally. Well, it's also amazing when they point it out about your own book and you're like, uh, yeah, sure. That's what I meant to do. <laughs> and then you like, bring the yeah, whole other yeah. level to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, that's amazing. Well, uh, I am looking forward to drawing Dina being out in the world. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful cover, uh, lovely story. And I am hoping there is more on the way. I, I'm hoping you're circling some ideas for uh, writing, which I, I imagine you are given the amount of material that you've created so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, actually, this is a huge publishing year for me. So um, after Dina, I have four four more books coming out in 2024. So oh, wow. um, I've got a picture book um, it, called Behind My Doors about the oldest library in the world. Um, I have a an edited anthology that I edited called The Doors Open, which is um, a collection of amazing South Asian writers. Um, and that comes out in, in April and my debut graphic novel releases this summer um, called We Are Big Time about an all hijab wearing girls basketball team um, oh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's based on a true story and it was really, really fun to write and amazing to see the illustrations come to life. So I've got those four and also um, book four of the Best Wishes series with Sarah Malinowski. So um, nice. another really fun book to write. Um, I love co-authoring books because it's always so fun to have two creative minds together <laughs> and, and it was particularly fun to write this book. So I'm excited about all of them and I hope you'll check them out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Next to the uh, picture of Van Gogh, there is like a comics inspired, like uh, multiple superheroes thing. So graphic novels are a big part of what I live around and talk around as well. Oh, so awesome. uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, that's, quite a year ahead and uh, love the fact that you're working in prose picture books comics um I i'm thinking filmmaking i'm thinking filmmaking <laughs> needs to happen at some point but... i hope so yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah one day <laughs> yeah that's very yeah. cool very cool thank you um and it sounds like no matter what age the reader is there's a point of connection with your work which is also a very cool thing Oh, thank you. I hope so. I hope so. I like to think that there's something in every book for every every person of every age, right? Absolutely. Um, no matter Absolutely. what the intended age is. I really I really don't like the fact that they put an end age or, or even a starting age. I, I hate those like age ranges yeah. on books because I'm like, well, it makes people think that, you know, what if you're 13 and it says like, you know, seven to 10 years old, I you know, but yeah, we all know, we all know that those don't mean anything. So <laughs> Agreed. Totally agree. Um, well, I always like to ask about as a closing question, and of course we can touch anything that we might have missed, but um, web spaces where people can connect, um, spaces for author visits, social media um, outlets, anything like that where a listener mm -hmm. might go and find out more. Thank you. Well, I just have um, my my dear friend from uh, childhood is an amazing web designer. She just redesigned my website. It's just hennahan.com. And there's fun pages for educators um, and kids. There's a special kids page. Um, you can connect with me through there and find out, you know, about my upcoming books. Um, I'm also on, and there's also a page dedicated to school visits. So I do love doing school visits and, and do a lot of them throughout the year. So anyone who's interested can reach me through that. And I'm also on social media at Hannah Khan Books. But like Dina, I have, <laughs> I have a struggling relationship with social media. So mm -hmm. I'm good at times. I'm, I'm like, get me off of here at other times. So um, I do check in, but um, I'm not like a super, super savvy social media person. Um, but you can definitely connect with me through there, too. And I love I love hearing from readers. And um, I do. I am one of those writers who actually reads all the reviews that are out there. <laughs> so I know some people stay away, but I love I love hearing what people think. So um, if you, you know, if you write a review or you reach out, I, I always love to hear from people. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you for the, the warm interview and uh, the conversation. And thank you for the time and the work. Oh, my goodness. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you back anytime. Oh, thank you.